Welcome to a new episode of the Jam Pack Report today for May the 6th of 2021. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams and this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest news you need to know from around the industry. Hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week, it's your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. So if you enjoy the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. But on today's show, we have plenty of news to dive into, including a brand new game announcement from Nintendo, Sony potentially getting smacked with a lawsuit, and more Stadia staff have officially left Google. Lots of big stories to break down, but first and foremost, let's talk about Resident Evil 8, which launches tomorrow. Resident Evil Village has gotten a 9.25 from Game Informer, a 9 from GameSpot, Easy Allies gave it a 9, WCCF Tech gave it a 9, lots of 9s throughout the board. On top of that, Windows Central has a 4.5 out of 5, PC Gamer has an 85 out of 100, and currently the game sits at an 85 on Metacritic and it's sitting at a mighty rating on OpenCritic. Looks like this is a very strong game from Capcom, and as Benji Sales here on Twitter says, Capcom is indeed on a roll. So if you are looking forward to Resident Evil 8, it looks like it's going to be a pretty solid experience that drops later this week. Very excited to check this one out. I'm still not sure if I want to get it on day one as I'm wrapping up Resident Evil 7 right now. I'm in the midst of my first playthrough, but it's certainly one that has caught my eye because, man, these new Resident Evil games are bringing something very special to the table. And let me tell you, I'm here for it. In fact, I believe GameSpot, if I remember correctly, could be wrong about that, Uh, but they summed up Resident Evil 8 by saying it takes the best parts of Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 4 and brings them together. That's very enticing to me. So we'll see how the community enjoys the game, but the critics are raving. Looks like a very solid hit from Capcom is on the way. But who is going to make the next solid hit? Well, I'll tell you, it could be somebody playing Nintendo's newest Switch game, which is going to help you develop your own games. This is Game Builder Garage, and it's launching on June the 11th. And I wanted to bring this up because this is what I love about the gaming industry, especially in today's day and age. Companies are creating experiences that are cultivating the next group of developers that will then make the next generation experiences. This is how people learn and grow and become game developers. They fall in love with gaming and then now you see gaming companies turn around and give them the tools that they need to build their own experiences and to cultivate a passion for game development. In short, Game Builder Garage is... And if this, then that for game building, you need no experience to dive in. You don't need to know how to develop a game, but in short, you effectively build your own video games and you can choose the elements that you want. You can choose what kind of game that you make. And in a way, it's kind of like a Super Mario Maker. But as you see here on Polygon, they cite WarioWare, DIY, Super Mario Maker and Nintendo Labo as three entities from Nintendo that have not only educated their players, but also helped to create the next generation of game developers and that is something that is incredibly exciting and so I love seeing these kind of experiences because not only does it help kids and anyone make new experiences and learn how to develop games but on top of that it cultivates this passion not only for gaming itself but for the act of programming, for the act of developing, for learning how to code. These are where uh, you see kids building their passions, building their careers. This is where it all starts. Very cool stuff to see, and I cannot wait to see what the next generation of developers has in store because there has never been a better time in our industry for creativity. So if you do want to dive in, this game is going to run you $30. Not too bad of a price if I do say so myself, and it does launch on June the 11th. Now, a new story has broke this morning. Sony has been accused of unlawful monopoly for restricting digital games to the PlayStation Store. 
In short, this is an issue that people have been pointing out since the PS3 era, where there is a disparity between the price of games on certain storefronts versus those on the PlayStation Store. And on top of that, you can even tie this back into the physical game space. Because as we remember way back in the day, I will admit the PlayStation Store has gotten better since then, but way back in the day, a game would be $59.99 for years on end. And you could go to GameStop and get the same exact game in a bargain bin for three or four dollars. It was very bad on the PSP Go because PSP games obviously had a price drop very quickly after they were launched nine times out of ten. And so what would normally be a forty dollar game on the PSP on the PlayStation Store would then be three dollars or four dollars in the physical store front. On top of that, now you have these digital retailers like Green Man Gaming that do provide verified downloads for PC games and for Xbox games, but you see PlayStation not participating in that. And on top of that, even outside of those retailers, you cannot buy digital PlayStation games on many of these other store fronts. You have to go directly through the PlayStation Store. It is worth noting things like DLC and season passes you can still buy from other retailers, but Sony has restricted the sale of their games on other platforms and they have brought that internally to the PlayStation Store to better align their global efforts. So will this lawsuit actually go anywhere? kind of yet to be seen because it hasn't even been filed. This is just something that people are exploring as reported on by Bloomberg and then amplified here by VGC. If I had to guess in my novice opinion, I don't really think that there is any solid ground to stand on here because there isn't really an unlawful monopoly when you can buy games from other resources. There is no game that is exclusive to the PlayStation Store that I know of outside of what is currently unavailable in stores, but every game is available from a physical retailer unless it is exclusively digital, which then opens up the possibility of if a game is exclusively digital, does that make it an issue because then you can't buy it from somewhere else. So potentially there is something there. A lot of if this then that to break down here, a lot of circumstantial evidence in this potential case, uh, but a class action lawsuit is being explored. I would love to hear what you think about this story in the comment section down below, but a lot of laws being thrown around this week as Epic and Apple is top of mind. A lot of news coming out of that court case as well uh, from potentially canceled and pushed back games all the way to how Sony feels about crossplay. We've been digging into some of the high level details earlier this week. But we'll see if this class action lawsuit goes anywhere, and I'll let you know if anything does come of it. And we talked earlier this week more about Google Stadia. Of course, another executive has left Google, but on top of that, upon exploring, six other Google Stadia staff have left to join Haven Entertainment, the new studio founded by Jade Raymond that is in partnership with PlayStation to create an original IP that is going to be on PlayStation. That's pretty much the story here. You can check out the specific people that have left. You have the head of creative services, the Stadia Games and Entertainment general manager, and a lot of other big names coming out of this company. But it seems like they enjoyed the leadership of Jade Raymond, and it seems like they enjoyed the direction that she was taking what Google had been working on, and so it seems they wanted to get on board with what she had cooking in her next big project. And that's how careers shift and change. Of course, conversations are the fundamental foundation of the business world today and of many career choices. And so I'm sure that they were having conversations with Jade just over text or via DM saying, hey, you know, what are you doing? How's it going? And then I'm sure she might have reached out or even conversations were had before she left Google. Who knows what could have happened there? But in short, it looks like a lot of uh, big talent is going over to Haven Entertainment and PlayStation did a fantastic job partnering with this company because Jade Raymond has a lot of creative talent and I'm excited to see what her and her creative team come up with in the years ahead. If you want to check out more on that, you can go over to the PlayStation blog. Uh, there's an entire rundown of Jade Raymond's partnership with PlayStation and what Haven Entertainment could potentially be working on. But stay tuned, I will let you guys know when more details are announced. I would not expect anything soon though, this is not going to be an E3 style announcement in the weeks ahead. This is probably something for a 2022 or a 2023 at the earliest, and I would say 2023 is a much safer bet. 
Another big story broke yesterday. Metalhead Software is being brought into the Electronic Arts family. Electronic Arts acquires Metalhead Software, bringing a talented sports development team and baseball franchise to EA Sports. This is a press release from EA.com, which says, quote, Today, Electronic Arts Incorporated, a worldwide leader in interactive entertainment and sports gaming, announced the acquisition of Metalhead Software, a talented Canada-based video game studio and developer of the fan-favorite Super Mega Baseball franchise. EA Sports and Metalhead are teaming up to grow the Super Mega Baseball franchise, as well as develop new gaming and sports experiences for players worldwide. Metalhead co-founders Scott Drader and Christian Zuger started the company in 2009 and have since developed Super Mega Baseball into a highly rated and beloved gaming franchise with an enthusiastic and loyal community. The Metalhead team will continue to work out of their Victoria, BC studio, British Columbia, while partnering with the global EA Sports team to expand the Super Mega Baseball franchise, as well as deliver new and engaging entertainment and sports experiences. Quote, we are all players of Super Mega Baseball, and we've long admired the work of the Metalhead team. It's a unique and beloved franchise among sports gamers. The balance and depth of the gameplay and the unique style of content makes it super fun to play with friends. We look forward to supporting and investing in the team so they can continue to build out more amazing games that delight sports fans around the world, said Cam Weber, EA Sports EVP and GM. EA Sports continues to expand, and we are deeply excited to create more unique and interactive interactive experiences, excuse me, that blur the lines between sports and entertainment, end quote. Our team has worked hard over the years to refine a formula that uniquely mixes an arcade style with deep on-field gameplay and innovative cooperative and competitive multiplayer experiences, said Scott Drader, co-founder of Metalhead Software. In this next chapter, we are excited to leverage EA's power and reach to bring our titles to a broader audience and to take some ambitious next steps in the development of our future titles, end quote. This move is the latest in a series of significant EA Sports growth and expansion announcements, including EA Sports College Football, EA Sports PGA Tour, and the F1 franchise, now published by EA Sports through EA's Codemasters acquisition. EA Sports is at the center of the sports experience for hundreds of millions of sports fans around the world. Across its unparalleled portfolio, including FIFA, Madden NFL, NHL, and UFC, as well as ongoing live service offerings on PC and mobile, EA Sports brings players closer to the sports, teams, and leagues that they love. Of course, terms of the acquisition were not disclosed. They mentioned that here in the press release. Uh, but this is a pretty big move for this little company. Of course, I've never played a super mega baseball game. But from the gameplay that I've seen, it seems to be uh, the more laid back version of a sporting kind of game. A lot of comedy mixed in there as well. And so I see this as EA Sports move to try and get those entry level fans to try and get those casual sports fans into the fold. If I look at something like a Madden or if I look at something uh, like an NHL, then I look and I see something that is more simulation focused. I see something uh, that is very professional. I see something that is very realistic. And sometimes I want something that is just kind of laid back. I look back to Madden NFL Blitz on the PlayStation 3 as one of my favorite Madden experiences. On top of that, I love the stuff like Backyard Baseball that is just super simple. And it's very, very basic. But it gets the job done. And it's fun. And that's really what it comes down to. When I think about my favorite golf experiences, I think about Hot Shots. That's my best experience with golf in gaming. I love the casual stuff. And so this is something that I might actually be interested in. Uh, this is something that if I were to go to the store and pick up a baseball game, if I was looking for something that wasn't necessarily a simulator, but it still gave me that baseball experience, this is exactly what I would want. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm sure that Metalhead will absolutely have announcements in the years ahead uh, as far as new games that are launching and new experiences coming for Super Mega Baseball baseball fans, but EA Sports has scooped up yet another big talent and brought that into the Electronic Arts family. Maybe you could be hearing more Gamescom in 2021, which has gone all digital. This was going to be a hybrid event that was shared between the physical and digital spaces, but it looks like that is no longer the case as announced yesterday. According to the organizers, Rights Gamatsu, the decision was made after extensive discussions with partners and exhibitors considering too many companies are unable to participate in physical events this year due to the still difficult environment. And I think that's going to be something that really does define 2021. 
The organizers are ready to go back to physical, but the presenters are still staying digital for at least the rest of this year. If you do want to tune in, Gamescom 2021 is coming on August 25th, kicking off with Gamescom Opening Night Live, hosted by Jeff Keighley. And then there are two days of the event, August 26th and 27th, that are filled with events. On top of that, various hubs are going to be there for players to become invested and involved. And on top of that, DevCom is also going to be there on August 23rd and 24th going into the rest of Gamescom later in the week. Of course, that is the developer show uh, that is a sister show to Gamescom. It's good to see people staying safe. This is the right choice. And on top of that, more funds can be saved for next year's event without the need for that physical space. But this is a very major experience uh, that I know a lot of people are going to be missing in 2021 and beyond because I would love to go to physical events now. I have the means to do so. I'm living on my own. I can I can do this. And I'm sure that a lot of other people are in the same boat. But no, indeed, that is not in fact, the case for 2020 nor 2021, it seems. But to round out today's show, some good news for fans of Minecraft Dungeons. Enter the nether on your laptop and fight your way out on your phone. Minecraft Dungeons' latest update brings cloud saves to all platforms 100% free. That's basically the story right there. If you do want to dive in, this is something that has been missing from the experience. I know that a lot of people dive back and forth between their Xbox and their PC. That's what I tend to do with Halo the Master Chief Collection. Uh, but considering Minecraft Dungeons and the nature of this game. It's a very PC welcoming game. Uh, it's something that plays very well on PC and it's also something that plays well on Xboxes. And so to dive back and forth between your desk and your couch gaming experiences is certainly welcoming. And on top of that, it's one of the games that supports touch controls on Xbox cloud gaming. So to be able to have these cloud saves means that I might dive in and give this one a shot. I played for probably about two or three hours and I kind of dove off after a while, but the gameplay was fun. So this might give me a chance to go back and check it out on my mobile device because I do love playing Xbox on the go uh, through the browser version on iPhone that is available now. Uh, of course, we'll see if this continues to become a trend. I would love to see games across PlayStation, Xbox and Nintendo get some kind of cloud support and we will We'll see if that does in fact become a reality. But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about everything we talked about here today, including Game Builder Garage. Do you want to build your own games? And on top of that, do you think that Sony lawsuit has any kind of solid ground to stand on? Would love to hear what you have to say. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon and peace.